Hey guys, what's going on? This is Dario DS, and welcome to the finale, the finale of Phenomeno, the mysterious visual novel that I've been playing. I haven't played for seven months, and I've been wanting to get the final episode up, but my laptop didn't want me to do that. And now that I have a new computer, I'm finally going to end this series once and for all. So let us continue the final episode, the final, the finale of Phenomeno. Alright, so I was able to finally figure out where we last left off. So let us continue. Krishna told us you can't move, don't move, and then we lost consciousness. Nagito lost consciousness. I should just say so. Alright, let us continue. To be honest, I don't remember much after that. I think I was lo loaded into a car. And then I think there was a lot of shaking. Consciousness became... My consciousness came back because I felt a familiar sense of cold on my skin. The one that seemed to want to wring me dry. My body was still heavy and my consciousness felt like mud. But my life instincts seemed to shout, This place is bad. When I came to, I was in front of that. I was in front of that house. The middle-aged man was carrying me on his back, climbing up the stairs to the second floor. No. No. I don't want to come here anymore. I wanted to shout, but in reality, I couldn't even move my fingertips. Not caring for my will, I was carried forth by the middle-aged man and stood in front of the entrance to that house alongside Krishna and the white-cloth woman. Krishna easily opened the door. I thought it, I'd locked the door, but it opened without a key. Inside glowed an ethereal light. Who? said Krishna sharply. I force shut my re resistant eyelids. No, I don't want to see. I didn't care who was inside. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I give up. I decided right there that I and then. If I were able to wake up safely tomorrow, I would go straight back to the home and straight back home to Shizuoka. In the end, it was impossible for me to live alone in the de demonic city of Tokyo. I wanted to turn into the f to turn around the fortunes of my family business and come to Tokyo to study for it. But I'm too much of a wuss to live alone. I'm better off living in the rural area surrounded by family and friends. My father and sister who opposed my decision were right after all. Uh, mother supported me, but I felt apathetic towards her. But I tried. I tried my best. But these happenings, I couldn't expect them. And I could do nothing. Come inside and close the door. Someone said from inside the house. I recognized that voice. Cold, clear, but somehow decisive. If you want to know what's happened, what's to happen, you should do that. Right. This voice. Yoishi. My whisper echoed through the silence. Yoishi? Yoishi's lackadaisical voice saying, Good evening, overlapped Krishna's incredulous voice. There was a spare key near the sewer entrance below, so I used that to come in. Let's go in. At Krishna's voice, the middle-aged man entered the foyer while carrying me and, while carrying me, and, he, and then he took off his shoes and continued in the living quarters. Krishna and the white-cloth woman followed behind. 
When I looked past the middle-aged man's shoulder, I saw Yoishi already sitting in the middle of an empty living quarters with a candle inside an empty can. The dim light came from that. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Lucretia sounded off as she was scolding, but Yoishi answered lackadaisically again. Quiet. If you brought that person here, then you too already understand what's going on in this house. Yoishi. I see. Lucretia groaned. Yo, Yoishi. A child posting on Igai Gabuchi. Yoshi continued her silence, but Krishna clicked her tongue and continued. I have no problem with you having an interest in the occult, but having interest in actually tiptoeing to the edge is different. You should realize that you're playing with a, in a hazy boundary. No worries. Yoshi flatly responded to Krishna's harsh tone. I have confidence in only, only in that conviction. Wow, she's undeterred by the angry Krishna. That is why girls are scary. My big sis was scary too, and when my mother snapped, she was even scarier than my father. However, Krishna sounded a bit lonely. I know, I know. I've seen children like you before. That's why I say it. People who harbor expectations from the depth of darkness. They always drag humans into the darkness too, even if they don't mean to. That's extremely dangerous. The middle-aged man slowly let me down from his shoulder and laid me by the wall in a sitting posture, and I had nothing to do but listen to their conversation. My powerless body felt like it was being dragged about, and I could only feel the endless sense of helplessness. What happened here? What's happening here? And what's about to happen here is everything was off the rail my life had been following. I could do nothing here. All I could do was listen to the creepy conversation and be an observer to a creepy act. However, more than desire to learn the true to learn the true. My desire was to run away. My desire to run away was stronger. As soon as possible, I wanted to get out into a bright place. Krishna. Just then the monk Krishna. Thus then the monk stepped in between in between the two. It started. Along with his words, the sound began. From somewhere in the building, that, e that sound echoed. Scratch, 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 scratch. Scratch. As if overpowering everything, only that sound echoed. Scratch. Something was grinding together. Something was carving together. The sound was the loudest I've heard. It was almost as if something was trying to crush this place from outside, and I frantically looked around. It was completely I was completely in tears, and only that, that creepy sound filled the world. Please stop, forgive me. As I started tearfully screaming, Yoshi said, Wonderful. Her happy voice entered my ears, and I became enraged. Wonderful. Are you seriously insane? It's beyond sanity to sneak into a house with ghosts milling around using a single candle and sit there. I, I get it, you're that. You're that. You're like a friend of ghosts. And then, great, can you tell your friend to stop scaring me? I'm sorry for barging into your house, but I didn't know I'm clean, I'm clean after myself. Um, you now stop bothering me and go away. I mean, tell your friend to stop following me into my new place and giving me a countdown. I don't know what kind of grudge you have against the world, but I completely understand. I'm, it's com I'm completely unrelated, so stop. Tell them. 
Of course, my body wouldn't move, and neither would my mouth. But I begged Yoshi with my all. However, Yoshi didn't understand my feelings at all. Hey, scared? I heard an inexplicable, inexplicable, hopeful voice in my ear. It seemed Yoshi had come right next to me. I couldn't open my eyes, so I screamed at her with my soul. Of course, I'm scared. I'm super scared. My body won't move, and I don't get it. And some sound is echoing through my head, and the psychos and ghosts are around me. Wait, this house is only for psychos now. A psychotic administrator that gathers and edits creepy articles. A psychotic woman that slumbers on a weapon. But despite that being of age, some psychotic baldy was in some... Who seems to... Oh my gosh, I can't read. And there's some douche ghost that never shows itself but does annoying pranks like of numbers. Seriously, cut that shit out. Are you an... Are you enjoying the emergency offline meeting right now? Here, I'll just wait for me to eat my pants, are you? Hey, come on, cut it out. I was wrong. I don't have to be here anymore. I don't want to see those numbers anymore. Like, one. Then what? What's next? I don't want to know. If you mean you're gonna kill me, just do it. Stop calling me and shit. However... Man, that was crazy. At some point, the sound had stopped. My dark world, with my, with my tightly shut eyes, had become filled with silence. What? What? What happened? I became worried that everyone had left, but I was afraid that if I were to open my eyes, something else would be there. Still, I couldn't just say that. I couldn't just stay like this. I was tired. I'd begun to feel reckless. If you're gonna kill me, kill me. I don't want to get I don't want to get cornered and hunted like this. Just give me a bad end already. I opened my tearful eyes, but then I I just saw a house unchanged from before. And everyone was there. Krisha stood in front of the door to the bedroom. The white clothed woman stood in the middle of the living room, with her eyes closed. The monk lingered by my side, and only Yoshi was looking at me with no emotion. Everyone was standing at the same spot they were before I closed my eyes. I gazed with my teary eyes at Yoshi's eyes, and then she nodded. And then she looked down. I followed her eye, her followed her sight, to my feet. <laughs> As if cutting across space between my feet, a thick wound had been carved into the floor. <laughs> I screamed and pulled my sluggish body away, but my hip wouldn't respond, so all I, had, all I could do was flail in place. However, I tried to scramble away anyways. You know what's coming. It was. One. One. The end. I'm tired of this. I want to go home. I want to go back to Shizuoka. Calm down, Nagi. Said Krishna. At some point, she started calling me Nagi. But I didn't care. As I tried to help crawl, as I tried to crawl away. I was too busy trying to flee from the number. No. What was the point of staying here? What was, what was going to happen next? What was going to happen to me? Get a grip, Nagi. Krisha sounded again. God damn it, it must be the monk. Some heavy impact shook my back. After that, the white cloth woman said something I couldn't understand. It was filled with strange rhymes I'd never heard before. Countless words that made my head go insane. But then as I frantically failed to flail about, a long black skirt blocked my way. It was Yoshi dressed in obsidian, as always. Move. 
I s- oh, move. I said it with a trembling voice. This time I was not- it was not glass beads, but not- it was not glimmering, but rather, this time only she had a fascinated look on her face as she reached out with her hand. Give me that. Th that. What you're holding. That. She said, and I looked at her. I looked what I held in my hands. A key. There was a key to the apartment. It was a key that I left in my pocket. I was holding it backwards. On the end of it was wood. For a while, I didn't know what it meant. And then the wood fell fell off into the one that I, had, that I had cut ominously at my feet. What? What? No way. No way. No way that. Yes. You know, she said in a whisper. The one that was carving numbers into this house was always you. The truth is revealed. With those words, my consciousness filled with white. In other words, it was a, it was a schema. A schema? A schema, a schema. It was an evening, roughly five days later. Krishna was talking to me in the, the beatnik club room at the university. Or rather, a reverse, a reverse schema. That house makes people uneasy. Krishna and I were facing each other in the room, under the light from the pretty, from a pretty dawn. That house makes people uneasy? I repeated like a fool, and Krishna nodded. In the past, Ikagabuchi investigated similar places, too. The structure of the building causes changes in the human psyche towards anxiety, and there are a number, there are actually a number of them around the world. Some of them turn into murder scenes, others turn people within into criminals. There is no actual scientific proof of the relation, but I'm of the opinion that they exist. People's minds, after all, are hazy things that you can easy mani easily manipulate into learning the ways, learning one way, or leaning one way or another. Well, wait a second. What exactly do you mean? Basically, that the building, that building wasn't built for people. I felt something like a cold hand gripping my heart. I'll avoid saying the name here, but the architect of that building had actually received architectural awards during the time in the university. People had high expectations of him. Krishna was illuminated by the golden sunlight, and her straight black hair glittered as she spoke in, spoke in remembrance. He was supposedly a very serious person. Maybe too serious. He was the type of person that would wander, that wandered of what buildings are wonder what buildings are. He would lose sleep pondering that. He loved the joyful faces of the landlords so much and worked and worked. However, he realized that the futility that arose that when one person asked him for another design, he saw the house. He put blood and soul to be demolished in the name of renovation. Families changed. Preferences changed. It's unavoidable as long as you're living, but he couldn't take it. If you're gonna take care of it while living, it would last over a hundred years. Sometimes people would suit themselves to, to the house. He left that, those words and said to have vanished. He left those words and is said to have vanished.
from his Altalir one day. His family put out a search request, but no one could ever find him. And some years later, he was effectively declared dead. That was over 30 years ago, and the Altalir was, was his final work and had at some point been dubbed the house that grants wishes. Krishna pointed up the third floor window towards the residential district. This country can toss aside countless traditions along with its Meiji era cultural revolution. I'm of the opinion that those one of those traditions was the house. Tile roofs became tiles roofs became scarcer over the years, and buildings that housed several generations became rarer. Mass production, mass consumption. That was the era we entered. We couldn't we wouldn't we weren't inheriting treasures anymore, believing that instead you could re reset life every few decades. After all, that sufficed for supply and demand. But I think that things were important to the people of this country faded away more and more. After I heard her words, I thought. My father was saying the same. It takes 30 years to grow a single sturdy tree. And yet, the Japanese lumber industry found itself in danger of being, of going out of business in the face of cheap lumber being imported. It wasn't that he was worried over his job. He was afraid that the idea that you couldn't get an unlimited amount of cheap wood would would become ingrained in the mind of the people of this country. In the past, people would pray to the gods that the forest would cut trees while offering thanks and be carefully built houses with them. Whenever they were rebuilding, they carefully tried to reuse wood whenever possible. Even on this earthquake riddle island, Horiuji, Horiuji had remained standing for a thousand years. The skill of the carpenters who had understood the finest details and characteristics of wood in the day were, of course, amazing. But they always say that the graciousness towards the important offerings of nature were just as important. I always, I always agonized over having been born into a family whose business dealt with lumber. Did I, take terror, did I take care of buildings as I grew up? Did I ever think about the feelings of those who created the building? Was I, I was filled with emotions as I wondered uh, if a day would ever arrive that his wish would come true within this grand city where every day you could see the sights of reform and reconstruction. According to Krishna, every or every originated, everything originated from the design that ha of that house, which contained the intent of the architect. When an architectural, when an architectural friend of Krishna took a look, they noticed that while it looked simple, it used extremely high-level techniques. They said that the groaning of the wood, the house was to give it durability against hurricanes and earthquakes, along with the bit of playfulness to deliberately make it groan. The meaningful space under the stairs is the center point of the sturdily, sturdily, sturdily built house. The kitchen, which gets abused the most, was deliberately omitted. The living quarters were deliberately designed to interfere with daily routine. It was certainly a house constructed for durability. Krishna mumbled as she pushed her red frame glasses up. Normally houses should revolve around the inhabitants, but not in this case. People naturally begin to feel like the house was built for something other than themselves, and that was enough to physiologically rattle people. So what, if, how, what happens when a boy who just recently come to Tokyo, who had no friends, decides to live there? So, in other words, it had nothing to do with ghosts? Indeed, you're much more mentally fatigued than you probably realize. Having moved into a city alone, you may have felt fear at first, but you probably tolerated it. Yeah, but eventually you reach a limit, and that's what... And then what do people do? 
Krishna looked at me with her big eyes. They create a reason for escaping from fear. Creating a reason? Yes, they create a reason for sounds. In other words, you are subconsciously carving numbers into the walls of the house at night. But I was speechless and Krishna leaned closer. Think about it, Nagi. Where does fear come from? It comes from the unknown. That's why people learn. They research inexplicable things to escape their fear. People's knowledge was born from effort devoted to escaping from fear. Cooking developed from out of the fear of starvation. Clothing developed out of the fear of external, temper external temperature. And buildings and weapons developed out of the fear of our enemies. Everything began from human fears. You thought there was an inexplicable sound at night? However, no matter how much you searched for the sound, you couldn't find a reason for the sound. Of course, you'd have to know where the, that the house deliberately does. Yeah, you would have to know that the house was deliberately designed to make sounds, but you had no way of knowing. And then what do you do? You were cornered, so you tried to create a reason for the sounds. In other words, you were a reverse schema. Is that even possible? No. It had to be. Otherwise, how would the number... Uh... I think it was three. Uh, have been carved into the back of the shoe I've been wearing all along. How would the number three have been carved in the back of the shoe I was wearing all along? I was wearing it, so it had to be in me. My lower body was trembling. It terrified me, the other self that acted in irrespective of my will, or rather, that I didn't understand myself. Well, Krista sat back down inside. It was partially my fault for leaving the building like that alone, even though I knew it existed right near me. Sorry. She said as she bowed her head, which flustered me. No, 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 stop that. It all started with me being greedy because I wanted to skimp on living expenses and didn't immediately move out. Please raise your head, I frantically said. Mm hmm, it was your fault. There are no shortcuts for granting wishes. I could give no retort and just groaned. However, I realized that there was one question that hadn't been answered. Hmm. Wait, then. Why were the numbers counting down? And then Krishna shook her head, saying, Who knows? Huh? You don't know? I asked, and for some reason her big eyes glimmered with an amusement. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, uh, but I think you probably carved a cross on the wall. A cross, not a... Ten? Or a nine? Right, the number ten. Okay. It's possible that it might have been meant to be numbered to begin with. It probably didn't matter to you. Your fear was alleviated by carving anything into the wall, so an act to act as the source of the sounds. However, this is why the incident became forth. A little bit of coincidence. On the place you carved, there was, from the start, out of pure co coincidence, a scratch. Um. Remember, you carved the ten, yet you woke up and combined the original scratch to create the nine. And that's what gave birth to something inside you. A ghost. Ah. So that's why I felt an incredible amount of anxiety when I first saw that number. The feeling of having encountered something far beyond the threshold that my, I, that I could not reason out. After that, you continued carving letters into the wall in, or, in ordinance to the sound you heard after sleeping. 
The countdown was probably because you subconscious, your subconscious desire. If the numbers went up, it would continue forever. You were probably hoping that it would eventually stop. After that, Krishna had a bit of a mischievous look. But you're quite simple. If the countdown had ended, you may have ended your life. I'm glad we made it on time. And with that, she showed me a soft smile for the first time. Alright, you've had enough. If you have enough of this, don't enter a world of ghosts out of curiosity. And as with living people, pay respect to all existences. That's the main motto of Ikaigabuchi, after all. And that, and the Krishna who had, who had said that with the complete series matched the image that I had, that I had of Krishna, the person. Although, she had more of a Moe character appearance than a big brother or a father. What a sad day. And with that, the complex tangled thread had been solved. According to Krishna, she realized that the building caused anxiety in the psyche of its inhabitants the moment I made my first post. In an effort to keep it under wraps, she had left it in Karasu's hands. But Karasu was pretty careless to begin with, and then became drunk. So the important message is to not come across me. This is why things had escalated to this point. In any case, everything was solved, so that was good. I'll give you a warning, though. As I was leaving the house, Krishna had told me, You don't seem to have much tolerance for this area. Maybe I shouldn't be saying it as an administrator to the occult site, but you shouldn't delve into the occult genre too much. Find friends in Tokyo whom you can bond, get a real friend, and construct a proper, solid identity with your... while well, you dabble in the occult as a hobby. That's the right way to do it. Especially. Avoid that girl named Joishi. Which sounded about right. As Krishna said, Yoshi was abnormal. She was, to put it frankly, like her feet were planted firmly on the other side. That was like, uh, that was probably why those unopened lynchings popped up over her, her odd level of concentration on the paranormal. The sunset was extremely beautiful as I stepped out of the west wing. The clear orange color shone straight into my soul. Dang. I'd become easily moved by this incident and almost came to, into tears, just out of the graciousness towards peacefulness. I hung on, willing against my, will myself against crying, but there are a lot of students about, so I... And a feeder high school was just on the other side, gate to the west, wing. There was a number of high school girls going home, too. I didn't want to embarrass myself as a university student. But then, I realized one of them was staring at me. Her black hair was pretty. She had a white skin and was slender. Her uniform figure was blinding. And just by standing, she looked like she was from a different world. Wait, what? I eventually realized the person I recognized, that girl. And could I strain myself from running to her? Wait, are you, are you Yoshi? And then the girl turned her glass bead-like eyes to me. Oh, you. Her sleepy response made me realize that she wasn't looking at me. Where she was wearing a school uniform and perhaps as a fault of her looks stood out. Even such an appearance, she seemed distant from daily life. Hey, what a coincidence. You attend the feeder school? What year are you? I spoke to her with a full smile. That has nothing to do with you. Norris's response was quite cold. There was none of her bedazzled, vialy filled look filled any more than that she was looking that she had been looking upon the paranormal with. I hadn't come to school in a while, and shouldn't have come at all. 
she said with an annoyance, and I noticed that she didn't have a sharp smell from before. It seemed that she'd taken a bath. Glossy hair and an iron white blouse with a black tie. I narrowed down my eyes and gazed at the contrast from before and said, Pretty good. What is? Your looks look more clean and your uniform suits you. However, though she turned her back to me, saying I was pathetic. I intended to praise her, but apparently I just annoyed her. If it's nothing, I'm going. She turned her on her heel and I hurriedly stopped her. You were staring over there. Did you want something from Krishna? Krishna. She seemed to react to that word as if life seemed to return to her glass beads. I see. Ikaigabuchi is here. Her response to the occult was pretty good. I felt like I was being driven mad as I continued talking in that direction. I'm indebted to you a bit too. I heard all about that house. I didn't know you were, that there were things and like some conscious confusion over a building. Man, I freaked out a bit when I learned the truth. I was probably on a high from being released from my fears. I kept talking. I talked on and on everything I'd heard from Krishna, the truth about the incident, about the architecture of the house, and about the will of the architect, and about even about the problems of contemporary Japan. However, Yoshi didn't react at all. Without even glancing at me, she said that's good, and continued walking without any trace of emotion. That made me feel a bit lonely, so I chased after her, bothered by the, uh, her body language. What is it? You seem pretty depressed. Is there anything on your mind? And when I said that, I remembered. Come to think of it, that day, she said at that house, Have you noticed? Right. What she did not what did what did she notice that time? I asked her, and she stopped. And then slowly turned around and asked back. Do you really want to hear? I felt like those black cold eyes would swallow me and I heard something inside my urging inside me urging to, me to stop that I shouldn't learn anymore it warned you can still turn back said Yoshi you know what they say if you peer from this side they can see you too Krishna had always said that as well and I felt goosebumps. But I wonder why. That moment, I had a bizarre sense of excitement. That I wanted to see the world as she viewed it. That I wanted to stand where she stood. That I wanted to know why her words always seemed to sway my world. I'll listen. Tell me. When I said that, was I seeing things, or did she seem to have a slight forlorn look? However, I would realize later that this was a fork. A story about a story about waiting in the bizarre, grotesque, helpless darkness of man. The boundary between that world and this world. The journey around Ikaigabuchi began this began this moment. After a moment, Yoshi nodded and began speaking. I was always worrying, wondering what it, was what it was called, the house that grants wishes. Why? Because the title lacks a subject whose wish. And with those words gave me chills. And I immediately began regretting my, regretting my decision. That house is in a house of hope. It just felt like an incredible source of malice. 
Yoshi whispered, with the expression of a queen who had been locked away in a dark castle along for a thousand years. The architect that had disappeared while loving strange buildings. The countdown that began with a nine. The mysterious space under the stairs. The house that grants wishes. There's a single answer that ties everything together. My goosebumps wouldn't go away. What was she trying to say? What was about to show itself? The girl Yoshi's dark eyes glimmered as she spoke. The architect is still inside those stairs. Wait, wait. Of course, he isn't alive. But then everything ties together. Why? There's a meaningless space under the stairs. Why it became, why the, why it became named the House of Green's Wishes, and why the number began with a nine. Wait, that doesn't explain anything. Why didn't it start from... It didn't start from nine because it originally was a ten. Wrong. Her words twisted my world. You originally original wrote ten. You're right, about, right to that point. But there was never a scratch to begin with. Someone added a scratch and changed it to a nine. Why? Why can't you say that? I saw. What? That on top of your ten, someone had added a scratch to make it a nine. Then, when Krishna said that there was no ghost in the house, and then Yoshi looked in the direction of the West Wing with sadness. There's no better fortune than living with bliss. <laughs> that is the person's kindness and what I lack. That is that person's kindness and what I lack. <laughs> I was going to go mad if I didn't laugh. You're lying, aren't you? You're making this all up, aren't you? Or is that an occult story you read somewhere? I laughed praying that that was the case. Yoshi gave me the, a sympathizing look, a grieving look. Everything is the truth because... I could no longer respond, and Yoshi quietly landed the final blow. When you were carried out, some man I'd never seen before was clicking his tongue on the stairs. As the world spun around me, Noishi's cold sweat, cold sweet voice reverberated. Welcome to the world on this side. And that is it for Phenomeno as we will watch the ending credits and that'll about do it and thank you guys for watching phenomena check it out i will put the link of the game in the description below where you can download the english version and i will catch you guys in the next video have a good one and good night peace